with that out of the way, we can go right ahead and go on into our second segment, which is going to be talking about the Boston Celtics and um, their recent win. I'm just pulling up the box scores right now. Their recent win going up against Phoenix. With this win, the Boston Celtics have officially clinched a play uh, a playoff spot. So they technically could go the entire season just tanking and they'll still be fine. But obviously they're not going to do that. They're going to continue they're going to continue rolling with the rest of the season. Um, right now it's just about to enter the half, so I'm going to go ahead and change this game to uh, a different game that's going on right now, the Big East men's tournament. It's Seton Hall going up against St. John. Uh, just to see the results of this game and um, the final score, because the game is ending. So ten mi- one minute, ten, minute, 10 seconds left in the second half. St. John's is up 85 to 72 on Seton Hall. And St. John's is ranked um, fifth. So this is an upset coming in from... Uh, from St. John's. A very huge upset. Seton Hall choked in this game. Goodness me. But, um, again, like, I know I said I was going to talk about um, NBA basketball, but this is still, like, this is still basketball, and it's still pretty, it's still pretty big. I did not have St. John's winning this game at all, but, but I digress. I'm going to go ahead and focus on the Boston Celtics right now, since I did say that's exactly what I was going to do, and, um, Going into um, this game, uh, obviously, like the most important thing and the most dominant thing uh, and consistent thing, honestly, about um, the Boston Celtics has been their defense. They they always come out they always come out the game strong on the defensive side of the ball. It's every single time, and that's something that that should concern a lot of teams because they prioritize they prioritize the defense. And if the defense is being is being prioritized, they have some again, defense is in the playoffs is something that teams can fall back on. And I'm looking at this article right now. Every time we see this Boston Celtics team record an impressive win, it started on the defensive end. And going up against Phoenix, like you could see that like they were they really wanted, they really had focusing, they really focused on trying to slow down Kevin Durant and slow down all of those three players. And um, it shows in the box scores as well. Looking at the final box scores, um, Devin Booker um, ended the game with 23 points on 20 shots. Bradley Beal ended the game with 22 points on 17 shots. And Kevin Durant ended with 20 points on 19 shots. So, with that in mind, like, um, this defense is, is absolutely insane. And, um, like, obviously, like, it speaks a lot on, um, like, being able to stop Kevin Durant. It definitely speaks a lot on their playoff prowess and exactly, like, what um, should be, di- like, the fact that they are able to stop KD and the Phoenix Suns, it really shows just how good their defense is, like, not just as a team, but going man to man because they isol they isolate the ball a lot. So they're able to defend the isolation, especially when there's three players that have the ability to ISO. Usually like ISOing like guarding one player that ISOs is really easy given how um usually it's only one good defender on your team. But if the team has multiple players who can isolate and score the ball efficiently it becomes a much more difficult task being able to stop them. And the fact that the Boston Celtics have enough competent defenders from the one through the five to be able to stop them is very impressive, and it's something that not many teams have. Now, they are, they are the favorites to winning it all, obviously, because they are, without a doubt, the best team in the Eastern Conference. Even with this win, however, and even with this clinch, I don't consider them to be favorites. Um, I really don't. I, I think the Denver Nuggets, they have a better chance of um, winning uh, the NBA Finals than the Boston Celtics do. And part of that is experience. Jokic and Jamal Murray, they have experience playing in those finals, and they have experience winning in those finals. I know the Boston Celtics, they have experience playing in the finals, but... 
they didn't really end up winning that finals. And part of that is because Jason Tatum didn't show up when it mattered most. He didn't play bad overall in the series, but he just didn't show up when they needed him to. And it's a similar story going into this game, like, to be totally frank. Um, if, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I'm not, um, not making things up real quick, but Jason Tatum... He had around 23 or so points um, at the first half, if I remember correctly. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that, I, that I'm right on this. I did a short on this previously, so go ahead and watch that. But, yeah, he, he ended the game, yeah, he had 23 points at the half. But he ended the game with 26 points. What happened? Where did the scoring go? That's really really concerning I mean going from a first half of getting 23 points I mean that's great and all but then only scoring three points in the entire second half when you're the number one option and like the game was close at the half the game was 65 to 60 in favor of Boston so it's not like they didn't need Jason Tatum scoring and they were just blowing them out no they needed his scoring. Jalen Brown ended the game with 37 points. How does he end the game with more points than Jason Tatum? Like, what? That, that really does not, that does not make any sense for, to me. And Jason Tatum, he gets a lot of hype around, not just in Boston, but like a bunch of random, I think it's mostly Boston fans, now that I think about it. He gets a lot of hype around Boston fans, and I really, I don't understand where that hype is coming from. That is very very concerning because i'm very surprised he didn't finish this game with at least 30 but again at least he made up for it on the defense and at least the boston celtics were able to come out with this win and thankfully they have Jalen brown another who is who was also the only player that actually showed up in the finals um when you're talking about like the star players around boston he was one of the few star players that actually showed up apart from and Jason Tatum he did not now obviously like um this this team and their defense is not something to be underestimated it's mainly their offense like i'm just i just don't trust the Boston Celtics it's a it's just something that you just know and it's like i've seen it countless of times every single year with this team it's like they're always expected to be favorites. They're always expected to make the finals. They're always expected to make a deep run. But every single time, they just mess up at the last possible second. Every time. This happens all the time. Eastern Conference Finals, every single time. It's been going on since 2011. Like, they've been relegated from 2011 all the way to 2018 to being LeBron's Eastern Conference doormat. Every single time they would lose to LeBron in the playoffs. Now, when it when it came to 28, now obviously like losing to LeBron in the playoffs, it's not something to really be upset about, but it's just it happened every single season for Boston. And even in the season when they were considered to be the favorites in 2018, they still ended up losing. Now, obviously, they did not have Gordon Hayward or Kyrie Irving in that series, but they ended up going farther without Kyrie than they did with Kyrie. So I don't think that argument is valid because if they had Kyrie, I'm not entirely sure if things would be any different. And the Boston Celtics, as a franchise, they were too... They, they've never lost in 2018, like up until 2018... They've never lost a series when they were up 2-0. LeBron changed that. Completely changed that. And they were expected to win at home in Game 7, but that never happened. And I understand it's LeBron, but even after LeBron, they still can't get over that hump. And I just don't understand how and why. They lost in the, they lost in the semi in the in the Eastern Conference semifinals when they didn't um when they had Kyrie. Then when the bubble happened, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and then they lost to the Heat. Then after that, 
They matched up against Brooklyn, lost in the first round. Then they matched up against Brooklyn again. They beat them, and then they made it to the finals, but they lost to Golden State. And here we are, well, last year technically. Then they go up against the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. They get close to coming back from 3-0, but the fact that they were even down 3-0 to the Miami Heat is insane in of itself. And then they played at home in the Garden to close out the series in Game 7, and they got blown out. I don't understand what it is. It's like with Boston, what can go wrong will go wrong. They're like they're like the San France. They're like the for for all of you guys that like football. They're like the 49ers of basketball. That's honestly the best way to put it. They're like the for, the 49ers or the Cowboys of basketball. Franchises that have a ridiculous past and a very dominant past, but recently have always come up short when the lights shine the brightest. That seems to be a common theme with this Boston Celtics. Now, with that, we are out of time for this second segment. So now I'm going to go into the third segment where I talk about the rest of the NBA games that went down and give a quick recap of my thoughts on these games. And I will be right back after the short break. And if the game, um, if the college game starts um, and commences, I'll keep updating everybody on what's going on there. But I will be right back after this short break. 